probably mm-hmm. time for us to get started. Uh, but I, I do this, uh, as I mentioned to uh, Danina, uh, I do this uh, so that people get used to my voice. Um, some of you have heard me before, uh, yeah. but others not. And um, I come from Brooklyn, New York, uh, where people talk funny. Uh, but I had a very good speech teacher who uh, unlearned uh, Brooklynese. So I speak a fairly standard American English. Uh, but still, uh, there are some traces of, of New Yorkish uh, that, uh, that you may hear uh, as I proceed. Um, I am at your service to answer questions as we proceed. Uh, and uh, you may do this. I, I prefer to uh, to hear a question than to uh, to read one in text, uh, especially if the text is in Serbian. Um, but at any point, uh, if uh, I lose you, uh, the odds are that someone else uh, is in uh, is in similar condition, and uh, I should do something again. I should uh, reword uh, what I've just said, um, and what you'll see. Um, I'm going to uh, to project the uh, the entire text, although I'm probably going to add some comments. Uh, the entire text of this uh, this lecture, uh, making it easier, I think, for you to deal even with the ordinary language, but especially with proper names. Uh, my American English pronunciation of of things like um, Alcibiades and Pericles. Uh, is is not what you're used to, and uh, mm-hmm. if you didn't see in English, of course, uh, what uh, what I'm saying, it, it might be difficult to uh, to follow some of the most important parts uh, of the uh, the argument. Um, so, let's get started. Go on. Okay. So maybe Professor Sima would like to introduce Professor Castellani to those students who haven't seen him for what seven or eight times before in Belgrade, but we have some first and second year students who don't know you yet. Uh, Well, there are some people who need no introduction. There are others who deserve no introduction, but I will, I will defer to the, um, uh, the master. Professor, just turn on your microphone. Professor, the microphone for me is closed. Uh huh. Okay. Uh-huh. We can okay. hear you now. Go ahead. You uh-huh. turn it off. Yes, it's uh-huh. good now. Yeah, I think that you really need no introduction. We all knew very well. We all love you so much, and you are always very welcome to Belgrade. But the only thing that we are going to miss is the dinner at Skodalia. So go on. Okay, well, you should now uh, see the uh, the title of the talk, and uh, I will scroll carefully uh, so that uh, what I say, for example, a murderous Supreme Court of public passion, tainted prosecutions of Alcibiades and the Argonusi Six uh, is on the screen, uh, even as I say it in my form uh, of American English. Uh, And uh, let's get started. Now, first thing before we get even to the next uh, screen, uh, the Athenians did not have a written constitution. Uh, And they did not even have a word for the constitution. Aristotle talks about politeia as a constitution, but the Athenians didn't have that. What they had uh, were uh, nomoi, uh, which were laws, but some of those laws had constitutional effect. And we'll see. First, legal constitutional principle, uh, the ecclesia, and I'll be using that word a lot, and you'll see it in bold, the citizen body of the demos, the nation of the Athenians, uh, that or who met together on a regularly scheduled day or in extraordinary session called by the boule, uh, the council of 500 citizens seated by lot. The ecclesia is absolutely sovereign on matters of law and policy. There is no appeal apart from it, them. It, they can override any previous resolution, ad hoc decision or legislation because laws, constitution, nomoi, uh, are whatever they will. That is whatever the speakers persuade a majority to decree at every session. Second, 
constitutional legal principle, slowly established um, when the, uh, the democracy was becoming very radical uh, in the 460s BC. A man can be prosecuted if his habitual behavior or a particular deed seems to the ecclesia or, or to one of the heliaia uh, citizen courts uh, to be an injustice, a crime, even a capital crime with death sentence available. Because in their judgment, a little bit of Americanism, uh, there ought to be a law. There ought to be a law prohibiting that behavior or deed. And the purpose is uh, to maintain good order in the polis, uh, to defend the democracy itself, that sovereignty of the all-citizen ecclesia, or to keep the gods of the polis happy. The infamous successful prosecution of the philosopher Socrates in 399 B.C., alleged his grave violations in categories A, uh, since he corrupted young Athenians with immoral thinking, uh, and C, since he believed in heretical supernatural somethings uh, instead of the gods of Athenian state cult. There was, moreover, a B aspect, uh, because the amnesty of 403 prevented prosecution of past actions Socrates' accusers could not name deceased members of the spectacularly anti-democratic 30 tyrants of 404 BC, Critias et al., uh, who had been closely associated with Socrates in their youth, uh, nor, closer yet to Socrates, uh, that cynical Democrat and sometime traitor Alcibiades, whom you will meet soon. I beg your pardon for the M there. Uh, I was tinkering with this um, just an hour ago and uh, didn't do everything as well as I would like. A process called Ace Angelia, public impeachment, allowed emissaries of the demos to order citizens accused of secular or religious crime, or both, to appear in the city to stand trial. As we shall see, that man Alcibiades and a few close friends received one of these that was contrived by his enemies, and he and they disobeyed it. Third principle suddenly appears about 415 BC, just about the time of Alcibiades' uh, first trial. The sovereign demos, people, nation, in ecclesia assembly, could itself do no subject subjective injustice. It could never be wrong. However, it, they, might acknowledge an objective injustice in a previous decision something that it they regretted afterward. Any citizen who wished could accuse such a thing's proposer and its advocates of misleading and deceiving the demos. A formal procedure could capitally criminalize advocacies of what a majority of the citizens now present and voting were persuaded had violated law's constitution. Uh, the grafe paranomon, indictment for violating law's constitution. The threat of such an action could deflect debate on a measure before the ecclesia. We shall see an instance of that, uh, this, that had a deadly effect. Then, because the Athenians didn't separate law from morality, in fact, nomos uh, is, uh, is sometimes used as, as custom, uh, something which is right, um, not being exactly a matter of law. So a moral principle is important to understand, especially in the context of ancient Athens. Virtue or excellence of an Athenian man, and of course, men are the only ones involved in politics, was men, I'm sorry about the uh, the break of the word there, philus el poen, tus de truscacos, this is the excellence of a man, to be adequate to engaging in the affairs of the polis, and as he does so, to treat his personal friends well, his personal enemies badly, uh, and to take care that he does not suffer bad treatment himself. Therefore, justness, specific virtue of a citizen, is the tus ilos same language, to treat one's friends well and his enemies badly, or more bluntly, uh, to help friends and to harm enemies. We start with Alcibiades. 
This man is probably most widely known from his role as a rowdy but eloquent drunk in Plato's dramatic masterpiece, Symposium, which memorializes a brilliant scoundrel's troubled relationship with Socrates. That handsome man with a charming speech impediment uh, had a high aristocratic pedigree. He was related to the great Athenian statesman Pericles. After his father's untimely death, uh, was Pericles uh, his, his, his guardian, his ex exasperated guardian, but also in some ways uh, Alcibiades' model. Like Pericles, Alcibiades outdid true men of the people who came from the lower classes in demagoguery. Uh, he used persuasive argument, successes as a diplomat, and even personal bravery in battle to gain influence and a large popular following. His personal life was scandalous, naughty, but not lawless. He was much talked about, but much more with amusement and shaking of the head than indignation, a true celebrity. He became a leading proponent of an ambitious expedition to the Greek West, planned and launched in spring and summer 415. This promised to enlarge the lucrative Athenian empire of tribute paying subject allies, by adding to it the numerous, populous, and prosperous Greek city-states on Sicily and coastern, coastal southern Italy. A huge fleet of warships, troop transports, and supply vessels uh, would intimidate the Western Greeks, conquering some by force, winning others over by diplomacy, in which Alcibiades himself was supremely effective, or by exploiting civic dissension. Uh, his competitors for popularity and power in the assembly, that's the ecclesia, feared that he might be successful. For if the enterprise were successful, it would be impossible to prevent Alcibiades from attaining Pericles-like political dominance upon his triumphant return. Joining him in a troika of high command over the expeditionary forces were Nicias, a political general, famous for his caution and good fortune, who had in fact opposed the expedition as too risky, and a career soldier and skillful military general named Lamachus. After weeks of preparation, the expedition neared the point of sailing west over calm midsummer seas when something shocking occurred. This is from Thucydides' history. In the midst of these preparations, the faces of almost all the stone Hermi in the city of Athens, black statues of Hermes, the god of safe travel and good luck, were mutilated. Those traditional square figures everywhere in the doorways of private houses and temples. And now I'm going to try to show you a picture of one of those, and I'm not sure how easily I'm going to, uh, to get to it. Um... I beg your pardon, I hope I don't lose you all, uh, but here is the image of a Herm. You should, are you seeing that now? Yeah. Okay, you see there's a, a beautifully sculpted uh, uh, head of the bearded god Hermes, uh, and uh, a, a stone block on the front of which you have the male genitals. That is a Herm, uh, and the defacement of the, uh, the Herms uh, appear to have had uh, two uh, chapters, you can say. Uh, the faces of Hermes, at least the nose especially, which is easy to, uh, to knock off uh, with, a, uh, with a hammer, uh, but also the genitals uh, were mutilated. Now, Hermes is a pretty important god uh, for, now let me see if I can get back to, uh, whoops, where am I? I want to get back to, oh, well, I, my students are familiar with this. They get over it quickly. Yeah, I hope you will get over it uh, with uh, with charity. Um, I want to get back to. You should have your word somewhere down in the taskbar. Okay, but I'm so at the bottom of your screen. Somewhere. Okay, let's see. Where's Webex? Where's my? Let's download. It's somewhere here. Um, <laughs> it's open in Word, right? There was a Word icon somewhere on your taskbar, and it had a dot, perhaps indicating that it was in use. So it's a big blue W. 
Well, this is this is Mac, uh, Mac, and I'm not a Mac person. But let me see, yeah, there. And that does it. Great. Thank you. Uh, otherwise, it would have taken me minutes or, or a, a student in one of my classes to solve the problem. Now, uh, in the midst of these preparations, okay, we did that. Um, there, they were mutilated, the traditional square figures everywhere in the doorways of private houses and temples. Now, the fact is, uh, and here, uh, the god of safe travel and good luck. Just before um, an expedition uh, sailed a long way uh, to Western Greece uh, and would require good luck. Uh, it had bad luck from weather and uh, even a, a lunar eclipse. Uh, but um, just before such an expedition to offend the God of safe travel and good luck was obviously not a very good uh, starting. Uh, no one knew who had done it, uh, but large public rewards were offered to find the culprits and it was further voted uh, that anyone who knew of any other act of impiety, offending maybe other gods, uh, having been committed, should come and give information without fear of consequences, whether he were citizen, alien, or even slave. Information was given accordingly by some resident aliens uh, and body servants, not about the Hermai, uh, but about some previous mutilations of other images perpetrated by a young man in a drunken frolic. Uh, and of mock celebrations of the Eleusinian mysteries uh, of the two goddesses, Demeter and Persephone, said to take place in private houses. These are other very important um, divinities of the state, uh, ranking in importance only after Athena, probably. When Alcibiades was implicated in this charge, the Eleusinian uh, blasphemy, uh, it was taken hold of by those who could least endure him. They hated him most because he stood in the way of their obtaining the undisturbed direction of the people uh, and who thought that if he were once removed, uh, the first place would be theirs. These accordingly magnified the manner and loudly proclaimed uh, that the affair of the mysteries and the mutilation of the Hermi were part and parcel of a scheme to overthrow the democracy. Uh, and that nothing of all this had been done without Alcibiades. The proofs alleged being the general and undemocratic license of his scandalous life and habits. The matter was taken up the more seriously as it was thought to be ominous for the expedition and part of a conspiracy to bring about a revolution and to upset the democracy. On the spot, Alcibiades answered the charges in question and before going on the expedition, the preparations for which were now complete, offered to stand his trial, that it might be seen whether he was guilty of the acts imputed to him, desiring to be punished if found guilty, but if acquitted to take the command. Uh, the Athenians did not have the principle that uh, American law uh, assures, although it's not always uh, observed, of a speedy trial. Um, he offered to stand trial, and as you see, his enemies uh, prevented that. Uh, they had uh, a, uh, a trick up their sleeves, as it were. Uh, now we shift to uh, Plutarch's Life of Alcibiades, written um, hundreds of years uh, later, uh, but uh, using very good sources. So he knew his Thucydides, but he also knew some other uh, historians whose, whose work is lost. During this time, Androcles, the popular leader, that's a demagogue, uh, produced a number of aliens and slaves who accused Alcibiades and his friends of mutilating other sacred images, as I said, there's some overlap, uh, and of making a parody of the mysteries of Eleusis in a drunken revel. They said that when Theodorus played the part of the herald, Polution, uh, that of the torchbearer, and Alcibiades, that of the high priest, uh, and that the rest of his companions were there in the role of initiates and were dubbed mystai, uh, initiates. Um, in the midst of all their uh, their heavy drinking. Such indeed was the claim of the impeachment which Thessalus, the son of Cimon, who was a, uh, uh, an anti-democratic leader of the uh, earlier in the century, uh, that he brought to the assembly, impeaching Alcibiades for impiety toward the Eleusinian goddesses. And the people were exasperated and felt bitterly toward Alcibiades. And Androcles, who was his mortal enemy, egged them on. Here's the popular passion that the title of my lecture mentions. At first, Alcibiades was confounded. 
but perceiving that all the seamen and soldiers who were going to sail for Sicily were friendly to him, he took courage and insisted on an immediate opportunity to defend himself before the demos, the entire assembly. His enemies were now in their turn dejected. They feared that the people should be too lenient in their judgment of him because they needed him so much. Accordingly, they arranged that certain orators who were not looked upon as enemies of Alcibiades, but who really hated him no less than his avowed foes, should risk in the ecclesia, or should rise, I'm sure, sorry, in the ecclesia and say that it was absurd when a general had been appointed with full powers over such a vast force, and when his armament and allies were all assembled to destroy his promising opportunity by casting lots for jurors and measuring out time for the case. No, they said, let him sail now and heaven be with him. But when the war is over, then let him come and make his defense. The laws will be the same then as now. Of course, the malice in this postponement did not escape Alcibiades. He declared in the Ecclesia that it was a terrible misfortune to be sent off at the head of such a vast force with his case still in suspense, leaving behind him vague accusations and slanders. He ought to be put to death if he did not refute them. But if he did refute them and prove his innocence, he ought to proceed against the enemy without any fear of the public informers, the sycophants uh, at home. He could not carry his point, but was ordered to set sail. Afterwards, during his absence, his enemies went to work more vigorously. They brought the outrage upon the Hermai and upon the Eleusinian mysteries under one and the same plot. Both, they said, were fruits of a conspiracy to subvert the government. And so all who were accused of any complicity whatsoever therein uh, were cast into prison without trial. The people were provoked. Here's public passion. Uh, they were provoked with themselves for not bringing Alcibiades to trial and judgment uh, at, uh, immediately uh, on such grave charges. And any kinsman or friend or comrade of his who fell under their wrath against him uh, fell, found them exceedingly severe. Thucydides neglected to mention the informers by name, but others give their names as Diocletes and Teucer. And yet there was nothing sure or consistent in the statements of the informers. One of them indeed was asked how he recognized the faces of the Hermai defacers, and he replied, by the light of the moon. This vitiated his whole story, since there was no moon at all when the deed was done. Sensible men were troubled by this, uh, but uh, even this did not soften the people's feeling aroused by the slanderous, slanderous stories. As they had set out to do in the beginning, so they continued, arresting and casting into prison anyone who was denounced. Among those thus held in chains and imprisonment for trial was Andocades, the orator. Uh, he was said to be a foe to popular government and an oligarch, but what made him suspected of the mutilation was the tall Hermes which stood near his house. This was one of the very few prominent statues that remained unharmed. If all those lying in prison with him under the same charge, uh, Andocides uh, became uh, intimate and friendly with a man named Timaeus, of less repute than himself, but of great cleverness and daring. This man persuaded Andocides to turn state's evidence against himself and a few others. If he confessed, so the man argued, he would have immunity from punishment by decree of the demos, whereas the result of the trial, uncertain in all cases, was most to be dreaded in the case of an influential man like himself, a rich man. It was better to save his life by a false confession of crime than die a shameful death under a false charge of that crime. By such arguments, Timaeus, uh, of, of Timaeus, and Docades was at last persuaded to bear witness against himself and others. He himself received the immunity from punishment which, which had been decreed. Uh, but all those whom he named, excepting such as took to flight, left the city, were put to death. And Andocades was added, uh, added to their number some of his own household servants that he might better be believed. Uh, the lives of a few valuable slaves was uh, worth uh, a price worth paying. However, the demos at this point did not lay aside all their wrath at this point, but rather, now that they were done with the Hermai defacers, as if their passion had all the more opportunity to vent itself, they dashed like a torrent against Alcibiades and finally dispatched the Salaminian state gallery to fetch him home. They shrewdly gave its officers explicit command not to use violence, 
nor to seize his person, but with all moderation of speech to bid him accompany them home to stand his trial and satisfy the demos. For they were afraid that their army in an enemy's land would be full of tumult and mutiny. And Alcibiades might easily have effected this had he wished. For the men were disheartened by his departure and expected that the war under the conduct of Nicias would be drawn out to a great length by delays and inactivity now that their uh, goad to action had been taken away. Lamachus, it is true, was a good soldier and a brave man, but he lacked authority and prestige because he was poor. Alcibiades had no sooner sailed away than he robbed the Athenians of Messana. It's a big city uh, in Sicily, uh, second biggest, I think, to, uh, to Syracuse. Uh, there was a party there who were on the point of surrendering the city to the Athenians. And Alcibiades knew who they were. He gave the clearest information of their design to friends of Syracuse, Athens' chief enemy. Uh, in Sicily, uh, who were there at Messana, and so brought the thing to naught. Uh, all of those who were going to turn the city over to the Athenians were slaughtered. Uh, arrived at Thurii on the coast of Italy, uh, Alcibiades left his ship and hid himself so as to escape all search. When someone recognized him and asked, can you not trust your country, Alcibiades? In all else, he said, but in the matter of life, I wouldn't trust even my own mother not to mistake a black for a white ballot when she cast her vote. Black to condemn, white to uh, acquit. And when he afterwards heard that the city had condemned him to death, I'll show them, he said, that I'm alive. His impeachment summon, summons is on record and runs as follows. Thessalus, son of Timon, of the deem Lachiadai, uh, impeaches Althabiades, son of Cleinias, of the deem Scambonidae, for committing the crime against the goddesses of Eleusis, Demeter, and Quarry, daughter, by mimicking the mysteries and showing them forth to his companions in his own house, wearing a robe such as the high priest wears when he shows forth the sacred secrets to the initiates, and calling himself high priest, Politian, Torchbearer, and Theodorus of the Deem, Phegaia, a herald, and hailing the rest of his companions as Mustai initiates and Eptoptai superior initiates, contrary to the rules and institutions of the Amulpidae, heralds, and priests of Eleusis, and he was condemned to death. His case went by default, his property was confiscated, and besides that, it was also decreed that his name should be publicly cursed by all priests and priestesses. Theano, the daughter of Menon, the deem of Grale, they say, was the only one who refused to obey, obey this decree. She declared that she was a praying, not a cursing priestess. God's bless her. When these great judgments and condemnations were passed upon Alcibiades, he was staying in Argos on the Greek mainland, a democracy friendly to Athens, but neutral in war. For as soon as he had made his escape uh, from Thurii, he passed over into the Peloponnese. But fearing his foes there and renouncing his country altogether, uh, he sent to the Spartans demanding immunity and assurance of protection and promising to render them aid and service greater than all the harm he had previously done to them as an enemy. Alcibiades was credibly guilty of high sacrilege at home and put himself in the wrong when he had disobeyed his valid recall. Then, because he correctly understood the strategy of his personal and political enemies at Troy, uh, he did much worse by defecting to Athens' enemies in war, Bolemioi. His first condemnation was sort of just, uh, if we assume that a grafe could be prosecuted lawfully against an accused man, accused man whose absence from the city was culpable. His second condemnation, possibly by proposal of the Boule and formal resolution of the Ecclesia, was uncontroversial. He could be judged in absentia and convicted not merely as an opponent of the democracy, but as an enemy at war of the Athenians, a true enemy of the people who had forfeited Politeia, uh, his uh, citizen's status and personal and political rights at, Ath at democratic Athens uh, by joining the Spartan side. Arginusai 6, 406 BC. Our second judicial scandal resulted from complex political legal crisis that included lethal finger pointing where no one was really guilty of anything except in the eyes of personal and political enemies. Moreover, what happened in this case was decidedly unconstitutional in principle and in detail. The Athenians themselves acknowledged this after the fact, but too late to save some lives. 
Although Thucydides died only after the end of the Peloponnesian War in 404, he did not live long enough to carry uh, his history through its last seven years. Therefore, Xenophon, Plato's contemporary, fellow Athenian, and like Plato, no friend of hoi polloi democracy, did so. The Sicilian expedition of 415-413 that Thucydides did treat in his books 6 and 7, literary masterpiece, uh, may be the masterpiece of history writing, uh, at least from ancient Greece, uh, although Herodotus' account of some of the Persian wars uh, is uh, runner-up. Uh, it ended in disaster of tens of thousands of Athenians and many allies besides who set out in summer 415 to conquer the Western Greeks. A scant couple of hundred trickled home late in 413 and for many months after. An emergency government of 10 commissioners, one appears in Aristophanes' famous comedy Lysistrata, tragic poet Sophocles was another commissioner, uh, was empowered. A restricted democracy under which only 6,000 men would have full citizen rights followed. And an oligarchy of 400 unchecked by a general citizen assembly that was never convened. Prospects of a negotiated peace for a post-imperial Athens seemed good. However, though not without a struggle, the older radical democracy was restored. The war went on behind the great fortified walls of Athens and her port. Uh, the Athenians held off their Peloponnesian and Boeotian enemies. They proceeded to regain some of the disintegrated empire by realliance or conquest. For to the amazement of their enemies, the Athenians quickly built and manned a formidable war fleet again. Nine years passed since the condemnation and self-exile of Alcibiades, who was still very much alive and a volatile player within the triangle of Aegean naval powers, whose corners were Athens, Sparta, and resurgent Persia. Uh, but that's another story. The year is 406. Athens has regained some of its maritime empire and precarious naval superiority. Her newly built warships and their hastily trained crews with innovative, ta innovative tactics won a decisive naval victory um, that uh, included a long, complex naval campaign, a clear victory off the east coast of Lesbos. However, uh, as the battle wound down, wound, wound down, came to an end, or neared an end, a powerful storm broke. Athenian sailors, whose 25 warships uh, had been sunk in the fighting, <laughs> the defeated Spartans lost 70, could not be saved from drowning, nor their bodies recovered for funeral rites. And funeral rites, as I'm sure you understand, are very important for, uh, for families uh, of fallen heroes. Rec recriminations over whom to blame for this failure to bring back living or dead sailors followed. In an appropriate demotic court, uh, the current champion of the Demos, aptly named Archidamus, leader of the Demos, prosecuted one of the eight generals who had commanded the victorious fleet for diverting tribute money to his own strongbox and for other misconduct. He was convicted and imprisoned. At a meeting of the Boule, the agenda-setting council of the Ecclesia, the five other generals who returned to Athens, the two had foreseen their peril and wisely fled to neutral territory. Uh, the uh, council, uh, they described, the uh, five, described the terrible weather at Argonusi. Nevertheless, at the motion of second-tier demagogue Timocrates, they were imprisoned and held for delivery to the demos. Lawfully, this should have meant uh, assigning them to duly seated demotic courts for individual trials by juries of citizens chosen by lot, each with a small panel of volunteer prosecutors. However, I know how to spell however, uh, a, sh a sort of show trial was mooted, was deliberated in the Ecclesia. Notorious opportunist Theramiles, a cagey survivor of the often deadly political strife of 411-409 after Sicily, uh, led the de facto prosecution by a group of ambitious orator politicians. They charged en bloc all half dozen arrested generals with inhumanity, disloyalty, and impiety. 
uh, for neither rescuing the living nor recovering the dead at Argonusai. The accused had very little opportunity to answer, far less than the time prescribed by law for a regular trial by jury. They protested that while they were directing the ongoing sea battle, they ordered several ship captains, including Theramenes, to pick up swimmers and corpses. Debate about whether the ecclesia should condemn them all or acquit them continued till sundown. Uh, in fact, the accused general's arguments of innocence, several surviving witnesses corroborated. They seemed about to be exonerated when the meeting was duly adjourned ahead of nightfall before a vote could be taken. That's a sacred uh, prohibition against uh, deliberating at night. The, uh, the gods of day uh, are offended. The Boule, a body of 500 citizens who met more frequently than the Ecclesia, deliberated the state's next action. Its then presiding tribe, 50 strong and on daily duty, was urged to bring this unconstitutional collective trial uh, before the next Ecclesia for an illegal group verdict. Citizen philosopher Socrates, who mentions this proudly in Plato's Apology, was the presiding counselor of the day and refused to facilitate such judicial travesty. He would not bring the question to a vote of his fellow counselors of the 50-man executive committee, Tritinus uh, of the Boulay. However, this brave inaction only delayed the outrageous proceeding, which another demagogue named Calixinus coordinated. At a sacred family festival, the Apaturia, over the next days, during which the Ecclesia could not meet, Theramenes and his cronies staged a spectacle of mourning by bereaved parents, brothers, wives, and small children, uh, some of whom were not bereaved at all, fake mourners. At the next Ecclesia, Calixinus assumed the lead, urging that the six be condemned. We lack his words or even a paraphrase, for unfortunately, Xenophon is not as generous with reconstructed speeches or so dramatic as Thucydides. Polixenus was temporarily thwarted. Xenophonus tells us that Eurypolemus, uh, son of Pacianax, and some others, served a summons. This is the Graphe Paranomon, uh, complaint of uh, unconstitutionality, upon Calixinus alleging that he had made an unconstitutional proposal. And some of the people applauded this act, uh, but the greater number cried out that it was monstrous if the demos were to be prevented from doing whatever they wished. Indeed, the mob, Xenophon's word is oklos, uh, threatened to try Eurypolemus and those with him together with the accused generals unless they withdrew the summons. How's that for orderly procedure? The Pritinus, that presiding subcommittee of the Boule were intimidated into bringing the condemnation to a vote. Socrates alone opposed doing so, but it was no longer his day to preside. Here Xenophon gives us a lengthy speech. True citizen Eurypolemus, seeing that a collective trial before the demos could not be prevented, cleverly argued that two of the generals were indeed to blame, possibly. His own cousin Pericles, son of the great statesman, uh, and Diomedon. Here's part. I accuse them because they persuaded their colleagues to change their purpose when they wanted to send a letter to the Senate and to you, in which they stated that they assigned to Theramenes and Thrasybulus, with 47 triremes, the duty of picking up the shipwrecked, and that they failed to perform this duty. Theramenes, one of them. Such being the case, uh, are these generals to share the blame now with Theramenes and Thrasybulus, although it was the latter alone who blundered. And are they now in return for the humanity they showed them by suppressing their failure to recover the bodies, uh, to be put in hazard of their lives through the machinations of those very men whom they protected uh, and certain others. He then urged that if it was the demos will, all the accused, 10 persons in all, be tried before the entire people as jury, but one by one, and with a full day's hearing of accusation and defense, according to law. And he added, uh, they would honor their sacred oaths as de facto jurors if they followed the law uh, one day for one uh, defendant. Xenophon relates what happened next. When Eurypolemus had thus spoken, he offered a resolution 
that the men be tried in accordance with the law of Kanonus, each one separately, whereas the proposal of the Senate was to judge them all by a single vote. A vote was now taken between these two proposals. They decided at first in favor of the resolution of Eurotonus. However, when Menicles interposed an objection under oath and a second vote was taken, and see, this is a threat uh, of uh, De describing Eurotolemus' proposal as unconstitutional. Um, back and forth. Who controls the Constitution? Well, it's the majority of the Assembly. Um, the majority of the Assembly decided in favor of the resolution of the Boule. That's altogether one day, one trial. They then condemned the generals after probably <laughs> a relatively short time. Uh, since Eurotolemus and everybody else were silenced, they were they were afraid that they were going to be included in the same capital uh, trial and punishment uh, as the the ones they were trying to save. Uh, they condemned the generals who took part in the battle, eight in all. Uh, remember, two of them didn't come home because they could see something like this coming, and the six who were in Athens were put to death. Not long afterward, the Athenians regretted the entire episode and began legal process against Calixinus and four others. However, during a spell of stasis, partisan violence that now broke out, they escaped their fetters and fled before they could be charged with grave and deadly violation of constitutional principles as ones who had deceived the demos. After the general amnesty of 403, Calixinus skulked, skulked, that's a good English verb, I hope you know that, skulk, come back. Uh, like a, uh, a dog that uh, has done something bad. Skulked back to Athens where, Xenophon tells us, hated by all, he starved to death. Good for him. Uh, quotations modified from the Carlton L. translation of Hellenica. Uh, these, are, these are all the translations that you'll find at Perseus. I hope you're familiar with that, uh, that important site at Tufts uh, University in the U.S. Uh, you have good Greek texts uh, and sometimes quaint, uh, somewhat uh, dated, uh, English translations available, uh, but uh, they're really good, um, and they they tend to be uh, more uh, more literal uh, than some of the uh, the more ambitious literary translations that uh, that have occurred uh, over the last half century. Theramenes, uh, the villain in uh, the story that I just told. A uh, Theramenes is called the Kothornos, a boot that could be worn on either foot. Uh, the democratic or the oligarchic or even tyrannical foot. Uh, he was one of those 30 tyrants whom the victorious Spartans imposed upon the Athenians at the end of the war. However, because of his moderation, what Aristotle suggests in characterizing him, or else because of his untrustworthiness, as the Athenians in general thought about him, he fell afoul of tyrant-in-chief Critias and was treated to a hemlock cocktail in early 403, shortly before the fall of the tyranny and Critias' own demise. By the way, uh, Critias uh, died by violence, not by the uh, supposedly merciful, uh, merciful uh, slow poisoning of, uh, of Hemlock. That's it. Um, two stories. Uh, if you have questions about any of them, uh, I, I'm sorry, again, my hasty uh, last preparation of this uh, did leave some um, some typos that, uh, that I'll correct before I turn this, uh, this over to uh, uh, my friends uh, at Pravni Vagodet uh, to make available to anyone who is interested. But uh, that's it. Questions, comments, objections? Um, I, I can't see how many people are still here, uh, but if you are still here, I thank you for your patience with me. Thank you very much, Professor. It was a very interesting lecture. And I hope and I presume people will have questions. So as Professor Castellani said, he would prefer oral questions if you can. So don't be shy on your microphones, your cameras, if you can, and let us see you and hear you. But if you can't for any reason, you can type the questions in the chat and I'll read them out loud. And if you want to ask in Serbian, you can also and I'll translate. Okay. You hear me? Okay, first of all, thank you so much for a wonderful lecture. 
And thank you so much for idea to give, to give us the full text of your lecture because it was really very helpful listening particularly very American accent and particularly some terms. I'm absolutely happy that I learned the word skulk. I would never understand what you should mean with that. And also, I'm really very happy to uh, have opportunity to comment on uh, English translations and terminology that you just mentioned in your lecture. Uh, I was always puzzled with some English translation of some Greek terms, but now I have heard the word impeachment that you used for the accusation, I suppose, or plea or whatever. Uh, do you use the term impeachment only in your political vocabulary or it is a word that you can use and as I have impression, you use it even in the term in the terminology of uh, courts and let's say procedural sphere. So that's my first question. Should you answer right now? Sure. Um, uh, we tend to reserve impeachment for uh, malfeasance of a public official, the bad behavior, the uh, the criminal or corrupt behavior uh, of a public uh, official who is who is guilty of some crime against the uh, uh, against the government, against the state, and ultimately in a republic against the uh, the nation, the people. Uh, so we we don't use it uh, in in private law. Uh, it, it, it's you. It's it's typically used uh, in an accusation. Uh, often uh, by other officials, uh, as in the, the American Constitution, uh, against uh, some high official, all the way up to the uh, to the president, uh, the impeachment process for whom uh, is is actually spelled out, although not in as much detail as we might like, uh, in uh, our Constitution. Yes, I I understand that, and do you think that uh, in this context, the term impeachment is proper? in the context of Alcibiades? Uh, yes, because he was a uh, uh, he was an elected general at the time. Uh, and he also was um, maybe the most prominent and most uh, effective of the rhetores, uh, of the speakers, which is actually their name for uh, uh, for politicians, those politicians uh, who are public faces and address the uh, the ecclesia regularly. Uh, so uh, yes, he was a public official. That made that made his um, uh, his sacrilege, blasphemy, or whatever we want to call the impiety, uh, so much the worse. In Greek term terminology, what word was used in that case? Which Greek you, word was used in the in the source? Uh, for for what? For impeachment? That's that's the for ace, impeachment. For impeachment ace, in case of Alcibiades. Ace Angelia. Ace Angelia. Ace Angelia. Ace Angelia. Ace Angelia. Ace Angelia. In Greek character. Ace Angelia. Right. So it's right. A, it's an announcement against a uh, a declaration, a public dec declaration by an Angelos. Uh, a state messenger um, uh -huh. who might be self-appointed, uh, but uh, would have, uh, if see, anything that you did that would have majority support uh, in the uh, the ecclesia was lawful. Uh, and so you could appoint yourself uh, as um, angelos uh, to deliver a message. In fact, uh, it appears that the, uh, that the impeacher uh, just sent state uh, officials, probably heralds uh, of the state, uh, although the word herald is not used uh, here. Great, thank you so much. And about the second issue that I was thinking, uh, of course, it is a very great and famous case with Alcibiades, but something that I did not notice before, and that you mentioned is that Androcles engaged aliens and slaves who accused Alcibiades and his friends for the piety and the and the statues and this religious uh, delict, for I'd say. Uh, I'm just wondering: is it the data coming from Plutarch or from some other source? You know what? Uh, why I'm asking that? Uh, is it? But it's strange to have aliens and slaves as witnesses 
in such important occasion. Do we have you any more it? knowledge about that? Is it the only accusation which came from the side of aliens and slaves? Or there were some other, let's say, more serious accusators? Uh, it appears that there were a few who were willing to... Um, th there may even have been somebody who was there when Alcibiades did this uh, and was, uh, was simply uh, describing what happened. This was believable. Uh, the accusation of this, this uh, gross impiety uh, on Alcibiades' part was all too believable. Uh, and um, one wonders even whether the whole thing was made up. Uh, the whole thing was reported pretty accurately with names named. Uh, and we saw this in, in, in two texts uh, that, uh, that I projected. Uh, we saw names named besides Alcibiades' own. Uh, so it may be that, uh, that there were one or two citizen um, accusers, uh, somebody who was there, uh, or, well, somebody who had a uh, pretty detailed knowledge of, of that particular instance of impiety. Uh, whether it was repeated didn't matter. If it happened once, it was uh, a disastrous omen uh, before the, uh, the expedition set, uh, set sail. Um, the Athenians would remember that, uh, that the two goddesses of Eleusis uh, had, uh, had shown uh, their, uh, their support of Athens against the Persians, according to Herodotus' account. But right, we leave that, that background uh, out. Um, that um, metics and these foreigners would be the resident aliens uh, who were lifelong, sometimes even for generations, um, non-citizen uh, residents of Athens. Um, and slaves. Now, the two categories could be distinguished, but uh, I don't believe that uh, the evidence of either could be presented in a normal trial. But what could happen uh, is hearsay. They didn't have any uh, rules about, uh, about hearsay uh, to exclude it. Uh, so if one of the prosecutors said, uh, we interrogated uh, so-and-so, the well-known resident alien or the son of a well-known or a cousin of a well-known uh, resident alien. And he told us, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, we interrogated the slaves of someone. Uh, and uh, they said, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these people would presumably not have evidence about the, uh, the Eleusinian uh, sacrilege, but uh, they can have been witnesses uh, about the mutilation of the Herms, uh, or about some of those other mutilations of uh, of statues that were were brought into the uh, the mix of uh, of accusation, uh, and uh, the <laughs> the fact and this is this is wonderful it's it's read into the historical record uh, of the guy who said that he could see who they were because of the light, the moon was uh, was showing up their faces was discredited, uh, and yet the passion <clears throat> of the people was so aroused by literal rabble rousers uh, that uh, uh, proof that uh, some of the accusations were false um, could not overcome the anger that had been stirred up against Alcibiades. Um, and most of his friends were on the expedition, um, or at least a lot of his friends were on the, uh, on the expedition and others uh, were, uh, were afraid that um, uh, there could happen to him uh, what was likely to happen to Alcibiades. Uh, and they were there. Uh, uh, it, the, the prosecutors could find false accusers for just about anybody that, uh, that they wanted to shut up. Uh, and uh, people who were afraid of that uh, could either risk capital punishment uh, or uh, leave town uh, and go into voluntary exile and uh, return only when uh, the political climate changed and the passion uh, was cool. But the people did not hear the testimony of uh, of slaves. They did not hear the uh, the testimony, as I understand it, uh, of uh, of medics. Um, that's to say, resident aliens. Uh, every once in a while, I think before the boule, um, and if we can judge from Aristophanes' play, the Acarnians, uh, a foreign ambassador uh, might be uh, invited to speak before certainly the boule uh, and uh, possibly the, the whole uh, ecclesia, 
Uh, that at least seems to be the premise uh, in Aristophanes' earliest play, where a Persian ambassador uh, is is ready to come before the uh, the people, uh, and uh, there's a, a kind of fake ecclesia uh, meeting uh, at the uh, the beginning uh, of the uh, of the play. But it's not terribly clear whether it's the boule or the whole ecclesia. Although uh, the uh, uh, what Dicaeopolis says uh, suggests that it's uh, it's actually the full ecclesia. And the, the people in the audience uh, are the ecclesia uh, for uh, for Aristophanes uh, comedies. Uh, this one, this one in particular. Uh, there were some others that uh, that are lost, but where the uh, the audience in the great theater of Dionysus seems to have uh, served the same purpose. Hey, thanks so much. Maybe some other students or some other people to uh, to post the questions. Yes, Isidora seems to have applied for a question. Isidora, please go ahead. Good evening. Thank you so much for this presentation. I have one question for you. Alcibiades was considered to have been a traitor and he was sentenced to death. However, uh, he regained trust as a military leader in the next several years. Was he ever fully forgiven by the Athenian demos? And if so, why is he still remembered as a negative figure in Greek history? That's it. Thank you. To answer the uh, the last question uh, is to um, uh, to approach the question of uh, uh, historiography. Um, contemporary uh, writers, except for uh, Thucydides, um, uh, are lost. So we have to trust. Well, we do have um, uh, Xenophon. Uh, and Xenophon deals with uh, some of the matters uh, where uh, Alcibiades uh, became uh, returned to the good graces of the Demos um, and um, was uh, was forgiven. Um, uh, I assume at a certain point there was a uh, uh, a rescinding, a rescission uh, of his uh, of his capital condemnations, and he was actually capitally condemned twice, uh, once uh, for. Uh, the matters that were raised uh, when he wanted to go on the Sicilian expedition. And then another time when it was clear that he was, he'd gone over to the Spartan side and was giving uh, uh, some uh, very important advice to the, uh, to the Spartans. Uh, so he was, then he was a polemios. Uh, he was an enemy at war, <clears throat> but before that, uh, he was simply a criminally uh, guilty citizen of Athens. That's why an impeachment was possible rather than a, a condemnation of an enemy uh, in his, uh, his absence. Um, he, uh, he was uh, a, um, a, a rascal. In some ways, uh, he was as much of a uh, Cothornus uh, as uh, the, uh, the, 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 the villain uh, Theramenes, uh, whom I was uh, talking about uh, in the, uh, the main exposition. Um, uh, he, uh, he became a uh, a radical Democrat uh, when it served him, um, a, uh, a bitter critic of democracy uh, in a speech that uh, Thucydides records that he gave to the, uh, to the Spartans once they gave him um, a kind of uh, immunity uh, from uh, punishment for all the good things he had done for Athens against Spartan uh, interest. Uh, uh, he was, uh, was instrumental uh, in the uh, reestablishment of the democracy. Uh, I don't recall that he ever really returned to Athens. You could be elected general uh, in uh, in absence, and I believe he was at least uh, for one or two years uh, elected general. Then he fell out of favor because the Athenians understood that he was playing a uh, a double or even a triple game. Uh, he was never not in contact uh, with the Spartans. Uh, and the Spartans were opportunist enough to take advantage of him if he could help them. Uh, but he was also dealing with the Persians. Uh, and uh, nobody trusted him. Uh, he ended, in fact, um, because uh, nobody trusted him, um, defending himself uh, against pretty much the uh, the world, although I think it was actually forces of the Persians who, who finished him off. Um, he was still alive. Uh, in uh, 405 uh, BC, uh, the date of Aristophanes' frogs. And I don't know whether you, any of you 
None of you, all of you know about Aristophanes frogs, but in Aristophanes frogs, the god Dionysus goes to the underworld to bring back uh, a poet who made Athens great. Uh, and it's between Aeschylus from the time of the Persian Wars and Euripides from the time of the Peloponnesian War, which was still going on at this time. Uh, and um, Dionysus asks Aeschylus and Euripides uh, each, what should be done with Alcibiades? Should the Athenians invite him home, uh, give him a generalship again and, uh, and command uh, of the, uh, the last stage? Uh, desperate stage uh, of the Peloponnesian War, or what should they do? Uh, that was a, a current issue as late as months before the, um, uh, the eventual uh, Car uh, uh, Athenian uh, defeat at uh, Aegospotomy. Uh, in fact, Alcibiades tried to give advice to the Athenians to prevent that disaster. Uh, he was ignored, um, and it was too late. Um, by the time of the uh, of the frogs of Aristophanes to bring uh, Alcibiades back, because uh, it was pretty clear that the that both the Spartans and the Persians had it in for him. Um, the Persians got to him first uh, and killed him. Uh, but the, there were a lot of Athenians who uh, blamed him for all kinds of things and would gladly uh, have voted for uh, for his condemnation uh, if he actually came back to Athens and stood a trial. Um, a fascinating character. Uh, and one of the best uh, of all the great biographies in the Plutarch um, lives uh, is the uh, the Alcibiades one. Um, and well, never mind the uh, the parallelism uh, that, uh, that that Plutarch establishes with a with a Roman. Um, but yeah, he's uh, the Athenians. Uh, the Athenians could use him uh, the same way they could use Theramenes, the same way uh, that he could use the Spartans. Uh, or the Persians, um, nobody is to be trusted, um, and everybody is um, uh, is uh, for uh, for sale, uh, whether it's for uh, for money uh, or for uh, for power, or in the case of Alcibiades, uh, for uh, forgiveness and reinstatement. Thank you, Thank Professor. You. I think Isidora might have disconnected since I see a exclamation mark over her video, but I hope she heard at least the majority of your answers since she just vanished. Maybe she will have something to add when she reconnects, but in the meantime, we have a raised hand from Marko Doslic. Marko, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, my question regards the first case, the trial of, of, of Alcibiades. If I did not misunderstand, after Alcibiades uh, sailed away, his political opponents succeeded in uh, in getting a punishment that was at first uh, originally uh, that the alleged perpetrators would be sent to a prison. However, after one of the, and I forgot his name, sorry, uh, alleged perpetrators agreed to reveal the names of the others, in a false uh, confession, it seems that the punishment was later changed to a more severe one uh, that they would be put to death instead of sent to prison. So my question would actually be why was uh, the punishment changed uh, to a more severe one after they had uh, they had more concrete evidence against the alleged perpetrators? Yeah, it's it's an instance. Well, <sighs> In an Athenian trial, and, and uh, those of you who know uh, Plato's uh, Apology of Socrates uh, will remember this, uh, an Athenian criminal trial had two stages. One was um, broke the law, was unjust, or was not. So condemned or acquitted. The second stage uh, was uh, to uh, for the penalty. And uh, the prosecution could propose one punishment, uh, and the uh, the defense could propose presumably a milder punishment. Uh, Socrates apparently uh, angered <laughs> the jury uh, in his uh, his rather flippant proposal that uh, he pay a modest amount of money uh, when uh, the prosecution were demanding his death. Um, if there had been uh, an ordinary trial uh, of Alcibiades uh, in a dicasterium. Uh, in a a court uh, assembly place by uh, one of the uh, the demotic uh, juries, uh, they might well have had uh, such a um, 
uh, such a, a two-part procedure. Um, but he wasn't there. And he had ignored a valid summons. Here's public passion. Um, the, uh, the people were angry at him. And uh, this was added. His, his failure to, uh, to report to Athens. But instead of going somewhere else, they didn't know where, uh, but they suspected that, uh, that he might go uh, to, uh, to do harm to Athens, as Athens uh, collectively seemed to want to, uh, to harm him. Uh, so because he had um, uh, ignored uh, a lawful summons, never mind that he was going to be framed, um, if you remember that expression, framed false accusation, false uh, conviction of something of which a person is innocent. Uh, he was sure that he was going to be condemned. So instead of being condemned, uh, he ignored uh, the uh, the summons. Um, that made them angrier, uh, and this appeared to make him guilty. Uh, it was a kind of implicit confession that he was guilty. Uh, of at least some of the things that were being charged against him. And uh, the uh, the uh, accusation could be compound. Um, it could involve um, two or three or even multiple uh, crimes, alleged crimes, crimes that a jury could decide were crimes. Uh, Socrates was accused of two different things. Um, Alcibiades could be accused of several, uh, but one of them, uh, could be that he ignored a, uh, a valid uh, summons. Uh, this uh, could have raised uh, his, uh, his guilt uh, clearly uh, to a uh, capital level where uh, his life should be forfeit. Uh, and since he wasn't there for <laughs> a two-stage trial, uh, he wasn't there to, uh, to uh, propose an alternate lighter sentence uh, if convicted, um, the, uh, the two st uh, stages were rolled into one. The prosecution demanded, and there was no uh, counterproposal, uh, that Alcibiades die uh, if he could be caught. Um, so um, he aggravated uh, the offenses, the, the accusations, what was accused against him. Uh, he made seem worse by appearing to confess guilt, but he added further guilt uh, and this is the one thing that is absolutely certain. He added further guilt by not responding uh, to a lawful summons to return for trial. And uh, uh, his uh, argument before he set out that he should have been tried right away um, uh, was, uh, in fact, uh, weakened uh, by the timing of this, uh, because the timing of this came uh, within weeks uh, of his uh, insistence that he stand trial. Uh, so he said, I want a quick trial. And here the people who summoned him were saying, okay, you can have your quick trial. Uh, you can be trialed uh, during the, uh, uh, the winter season when uh, the, uh, uh, the campaign against uh, the Italians and Italian Greeks and, uh, and Sicilian ones uh, would be pretty much in suspense. Um, so he really didn't have much of an argument about, uh, about that. Uh, he wanted to be tried uh, immediately. Uh, they said, you'd be tried after the war. Well, this appeared to be a compromise. Uh, he wanted his trial quickly. Well, we'll give him a trial uh, when the uh, the fighting uh, calms down uh, in the uh, the Western theater of operations. At least that would be the way I'd, uh, I'd explain um, the, this suddenly becoming capital. Uh, but remember, see, he wasn't there uh, if convicted uh, to propose exile or a substantial fine or something uh, alternative to uh, to death. So he wasn't there to defend himself. That appeared to be a confession of guilt. And he wasn't there to propose something less than death. So let's kill him if we can, if we can catch him. Uh, thank you. If I may add, if I understood correctly, there were there were also other people involved in the Hermae incident, and not only Alcibiades. Were these people just not a factor to the political opponents of uh, Alcibiades that wanted that just wanted his uh, death at all costs, or was the punishment were uh, ma made worse only for Alcibiades and the rest? Uh, had uh, an easier punishment or were all people involved in the incident uh, just sent to that? 
we don't have a court record. Uh, we don't have all the information we would like. Um, and we aren't even sure, but we can guess that those other people mentioned um, the so and so is going to be the herald, so and so is going to be the uh, the bearer of something, the box bearer, uh, and others are going to be initiates. Uh, that those are people who accompanied uh, Alcibiades uh, on the expedition to the west, uh, and uh, it's quite clear. I think it's even mentioned in the text that um, yeah, that I quoted. Um, uh, it's quite clear that uh, that several of the people with him were part of the accusation. Uh, and they might have included uh, Theodorus. That's the one name that uh, that I remember uh, because Aristophanes uh, talks about uh, Alcibiades' mispronunciation of his name. Apparently, he, he was pronouncing it like Theodorus. Uh, the Alcibiades had that uh, that L and R um, uh, impediment, uh, and so Aristophanes has to do Theodorus um, and. I remember that from Aristophanes, not so much from uh, from uh, the uh, the Plutarch life, but th those those were apparently uh, regarded as uh, as uh, equally uh, guilty of a terrible sa uh, sacrilege, blasphemy, whatever we want to call it. Uh, sacrilege is violation of rights. Blasphemy is linguistic uh, violation, uh, and uh, both were involved since they. Uh, they apparently imitated. I say apparently. Uh, the accusation was, and it's a believable accusation, uh, that they used some of the language uh, of the uh, the rite of initiation, uh, but also uh, imitated uh, some of its uh, uh, some of the stage directions, uh, some of the physical actions uh, that uh, that accompanied uh, initiation. Um, so, um, again, to summarize, um, uh, others whose names were named um, seem to have been with, Arist with Aristophanes, with Alcibiades, uh, and um, uh, probably did not return to, uh, to Athens. But what happened to them, we don't know. Or at least I don't know. And I don't think there's any evidence for what happened to, to any of those other people. But uh, we know that uh, maybe they scattered when they got to Thurii. Yes. Thank you very much. That definitely clears it up. As it it, it is pretty obvious that if uh, they were uh, they were friends of Alcibiades, that they would also be on the target of his political opponents. So yeah, yeah, it's, but by uh, this or by clear. some false accusation, uh, there there false accusations were um, were a day, uh, one a day, maybe two a day uh, in the Athenian uh, uh, political free for all, and uh, if you had witnesses. Uh, willing to lie, like the guy who lied about the moonlight, um, uh, you might uh, bring some serious uh, uh, peril, danger uh, to uh, to someone you wanted to uh, to destroy. Especially if it's a rich or prominent man, uh, whom a demotic jury of uh, of poor old men um, were uh, all too eager uh, to condemn. Um, Aristophanes has a play about this called the uh, the Wasps about hell. Uh, how dangerous it was to be uh, to be wealthy, even if you were unpolitical. Uh, if somebody charged you, uh, he might get a portion of your uh, your wealth, uh, and uh, you would be uh, seriously uh, condemned, maybe to death, or maybe merely to confiscation of your goods, which Arista, which Alcibiades also suffered, and the others named with him, uh, no doubt, also suffered. Uh, thank you thank very you. much. You're welcome. Thank you for the the question and observation. I don't seem to hear see any more hands. Does anyone have something? If not, oh, Professor Ramovich, go ahead. Yeah, maybe the final impression about Alcibiades from your point of view. How do you perceive him? Uh, do you see him as a tragic patriot, a tragic figure, which uh, suffered for his country, being misunderstood, so many times, or you rather perceive him as a scoundrel, or how do you say, a uh, bastard who mm -hmm. only was looking for his career and for his interest. I am, in my perception, very often at some points and some periods, and when I read something, 
on his side and I really suffer with him. But sometimes I really feel that he had some uh, too exaggerated need to be the leader, to be the first man, to be accepted by the police as the best possible solution. So I'm definitely in between of those two extremes. What is your opinion? Um, I uh, tend to regard him as a, a scoundrel, uh, as someone who had a great potential for good, uh, but um, was uh, too easily distracted uh, by his personal individual self-interest. Uh, he seems to have been loyal to his, his closest friends, uh, but uh, those were his, his flatterers. Uh, those were willing to uh, to be uh, servants to him as the high priest of Demeter uh, at the um, uh, the uh, mockery uh, of Eleusinian uh, ritual. Uh, so I find him to be um, he, he's a brilliant man, but was brilliant ultimately uh, in his own interest. Um, uh, if he had succeeded uh, in uh, the Sicilian expedition. Uh, he would have gained uh, Pericles-like uh, dominance in Athenian politics. Uh, whether he would have managed the state as well for almost everyone uh, as Pericles did, I can't, I can't guess. Uh, but he certainly would have had that kind of power. He, he knew Pericles' career, and he knew how Pericles had, uh, uh, had attained dominance. Uh, and uh, he wanted to have something even more spectacular than Pericles' achievement uh, to his credit uh, so that uh, he could uh, achieve a similar authority. Uh, how he would have used it? Well, um, we can't say. Uh, it's almost that he had a, a devil and an angel, uh, one on his left shoulder and the other on his right shoulder. Uh, and uh, he listened to one, and then he listened to the other. Um, his characterization in Plato's, I called it his masterpiece, and I think it is, in the symposium, uh, is just right. Um, when he listened to Socrates, uh, he became an angel. But then when he got out into the street, uh, he, uh, he realized that, uh, that his personal ambition, his desire for glory, Philotimo, I think it is in modern Greek, uh, philotimia in ancient Greek, his desire for glory um, trumped, if I can use that expression, uh, his, uh, his sense of, of wisdom and, uh, and justice uh, that, uh, that Socrates uh, tried to get him uh, to, uh, to incorporate uh, rather than to, uh, to take on the surface uh, and then abandon for another surface when he was out in the... Uh, out in the streets and before the assembly. Um, it's an interesting question, though, because uh, Theramenes, uh, whom I uh, painted as a villain, um, was uh, actually admired by Aristotle. Uh, and I mentioned it in the end of that last little bit that Aristotle thought that uh, uh, that he was uh, he was a, a moderate, uh, and that. Uh, Any time he participated in uh, in one or the other side uh, of the uh, the political divide, um, he tried to uh, to moderate it. Um, and uh, Aristotle, uh, I believe, uh, describes him as someone uh, who could serve the Athenians himself and the Athenians. Whether he put the Athenians first or himself first, uh, he was really concerned about the Athenians. This is Aristotle's diagnosis. Uh, and uh, he could serve the Athenians under any constitution. Uh, and why he fell afoul of Critias, the tyrant in chief, we would love to know. And uh, my suspicion is, and I'll side with Aristotle here, uh, is that he tried to, um, uh, to mitigate some of the, uh, the atrocities uh, of, the, um, uh, of the 30 tyrants. Um, but we, we can't be sure, but I don't know Aristotle, that, that there is a recorded judgment of, uh, of Aristotle on Alcibiades, but he did have something to say about, uh, uh about, uh, Theomenes, um, that 
um, suggests that he um, he had followed closely uh, the events of the last decade uh, or the last dozen, 15 years or so uh, of Athenian um, uh, Athenian history in the, uh, the, the time before Aristotle was born. Um, but I, I think that Alcibiades put himself first. Uh, whether, what Theramenes did uh, is a little bit more elusive. A uh, fascinating character who had uh, some admirers, uh, not only Aristotle, uh, but also had lots of enemies because uh, he couldn't be he couldn't be trusted uh, each time the constitution changed uh, to try to restore the uh, the preceding constitution. He would just he was he was the the, the boot he could he could put uh, his his foot uh, uh, his left foot or his right foot uh, in the uh, in the boot. And uh, and get along just fine. We have a question from Ivana Vilkatic. She's raised her hand. Ivana, please go ahead. Hi, everybody. I hope that my English will be good. I have uh, also one question, like Professor Sima, about translate uh, the word "asangelia." The word impeachment, uh, when we read the re word impeachment, we all think about uh, impeachment in uh, USA. But uh, do you think that denunciation would be a um, more proper word for a singalia? Because uh, a singalia is quite different from uh, uh, impeachment in USA because uh, Every citizen could um, make a sangalia. In the USA, they couldn't. That is for now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, the word um, was evidently current uh, in the um, the eighteenth century, uh, and is written into our constitution. And its application there suggests that it is. Uh, a, a formal accusation of a public official. Um, it could be uh, a member of government. It could be uh, impeachment for um, for federal judges um, uh, is also included in the uh, the impeachment um, rules uh, of the uh, the U.S. Constitution. Uh, I do not know uh, enough about public British law because. Most of the uh, the terms in the Constitution were familiar to uh, uh, to people who's uh, who came from England uh, or uh, who uh, whose parents did, uh, and who operated it under a kind of satellite um, uh, British law or English law uh, in the uh, the British colonies in North America. Um, denunciation um, is, uh, I think, um, a more generic term uh, that, uh, although uh, it might be uh, interchangeable in some applications with the species impeachment, uh, can also include um, accusation of a of a serious um, a private uh, criminal uh, misbehavior. Um, now, the the Athenian courts would uh, would typically be interested in only in violations of justice. Uh, a um, uh, the instruction to the um, to the jury said that so and so adike uh, is uh, is committing injustice, uh, and the uh, the injustice would uh, would sometimes be a matter of private law, but more often public. Uh, this seems to have been used only for violation of of public law, uh, but we don't have detail enough uh, for the fifth century. Uh, we've got much more detail uh, for the uh, the time of the uh, the orators, uh, and sometimes a generation or two uh, into the um, the fourth century, the three hundreds BC. Um, the uh, I, I haven't had a chance to do a, a word search uh, on uh, Ace Anglia uh, or even uh, Ace Angelo uh, to uh, to see how the uh, how the word is is used. Uh, in you know doing a, a, a thesaurus linguae graecae search that might actually be rewarding 
uh, to see how it's uh, how it's used. Uh, it is not a very common term, uh, just as impeachment is not a common term in American law. Uh, and uh, I think it may have been reserved. I have the impression that it was reserved uh, for accusation of a uh, of an official. Uh, the official could be somebody elected. The official could be somebody on an embassy, uh, but uh, but somebody uh, appointed by the state, uh, by the assembly, uh, by the uh, the voters uh, for a, uh, a particular political function, uh, who is therefore uh, not just doing some uh, some crime, uh, but uh, was doing some crime that directly affected the uh, you know, the demos. Uh, but again, we don't have we don't have uh, information enough. Uh, but uh, I will confess that uh, that uh, I haven't uh, uh, followed the uh, the term uh, into all of its its applications um, through any that occur uh, in the uh, the fourth century. Um, after that, uh, I think Athenian law becomes uh, a big um, black hole. Uh, about which we have very little information. Thank you. So oh, was that uh, an answer oh. or? Um, so so. <laughs> okay. See, I I impeach, uh, impeach is a quaint word. It's uh, almost an obsolescent word uh, in uh, in today's American English. Uh, and uh, if somebody uses the word impeach for something other than what just happened, uh, or well, it happened, it wasn't impeachment, but it wasn't a conviction to, uh, to Mr. Trump, uh, it would now be understood uh, as a, a metaphorical application. Mm -hmm. Okay, originally there was not a metaphor, it was a, uh, a generic term, but na more narrow uh, than, uh, than denunciation. See, that, that's my point. Denunciation can certainly be used uh, with overlap uh, to uh, impeachment or denounce uh, to uh, impeach. Um, but impeachment as a as a particular public process, uh, and that's what the U.S. Constitution uh, says about it, uh, is uh, of a uh, one organ of government uh, impeaching uh, another one. Uh, the uh, the legislative uh, impeaching uh, a member of the uh, judici judiciary, that's to say, um, a, a justice of one of the federal courts, uh, or uh, a uh, the, uh, an executive, the chief executive himself, I suppose, a vice president could be uh, could be impeached as well. Um, you don't we don't talk about the impeachment of a corrupt member of the Senate or the uh, or the House of Representatives. They they are not impeached. Uh, they can be accused of, uh, of criminal uh, behavior, uh, of corruption uh, by the rules, the ethics rules of the two houses, uh, and, uh, and can be subject to, uh, to criminal jurisdiction. But uh, that would not be impeachment. That would be a criminal process against a, um, a representative or a senator. Um, under the, the Constitution, uh, impeachment is, is limited uh, to uh, federal judges um, and um, the president and vice president. Okay. Thank you very much. If I may follow up just for the British origins of impeachment, I think, uh, I mean, I, as far as I know, it was the original form of impeachment was an accusation by uh, by the Parliament of Ministers in Britain, and then the U.S. Constitution extended it to the President and to the Judiciary. Uh, but if I also may follow up with questions to something uh, Professor Avamovich asked previously, uh, the part with the aliens and the slaves, uh, wasn't it also that the, the second part of accusations against Alcibiades uh, was brought by a woman that was also not quite standard issue in Athens because women weren't personally uh, allowed to testify before courts, so a woman would have to be represented by her curious. So maybe it was just uh, brought up out into the public by a woman and then someone took it up to persecute. So, so just briefly, what's your view on that? 
And another question regarding your perspective, since Professor Avamovich already asked your attitude about Alcibiades in general, uh, and I'm also leaning towards him as a talented scoundrel, but scoundrel or not, you said yourself that at least some of the accusations were framed. So uh, essentially, what's your opinion? I know we can't deduce it for certain from the sources, but what do you think? Was most of it true or was it more of a political setup? Um, that the mutilation of the Herms, which got the whole thing started, uh, was uh, the, um, the work uh, of uh, drunken young people that uh, was itself probably uh, speculation. Uh, nobody remember the first thing is that nobody knew who did it. That's the, that that heads the uh, the discussion of the uh, the matter uh, in uh, in Thucydides and in uh, Plutarch both. So nobody knew who did it. I think there's an influence uh, an inference of uh, of uh, uh, rowdy uh, juvenile delinquents. Um, at this point, Alcibiades was no kid. Uh, he was probably about 40 or something like that, but he maintained the lifestyle of, uh, you could say, of a juvenile delinquent. Uh, so he's kind of honorary uh, juvenile. Uh, he made his first impressions um, uh, on the Athenians when, in fact, he was only uh, just past F.E. bait, so uh, 20 or so. Um, so that he uh, was a... Um, uh, a rowdy drunk, part of a boisterous uh, uh, theosos, Dionysian um, rowdy riot. Um, Plato's symposium even seems to suggest, because uh, Alcibiades came with some other people to interrupt the uh, the symposium at Agathon's house, according to, uh, to Plato. Um, so uh, that he, although he was no longer uh, a, a youth, um, was a kind of uh, old guy among the uh, the G the JDs, the juvenile delinquents, uh, was believable. Um, he probably wasn't involved in that, um, and probably wasn't involved in uh, in um, physical uh, sacrilege, uh, break breaking other uh, statues that was brought in. And I don't know how far back those accusations go. We don't have any detail. Uh, he probably was guilty. I'll say probably that that may be too strong a word. Uh, he very likely was guilty of the uh, the Eleusinian uh, mockery, um, and that was not a good thing. Um, Socrates might not have thought much about uh, Eleusinian initiation, but uh, he would not have thought that to be a good thing. Um, uh, he uh, he believed in other divine forces or gods who had very different character than the, than the gods of myths, very often scandalous uh, in their behavior. Um, so I, I think he was probably guilty of the uh, of that um, sacrilegious, blasphemous mockery. Um, those who, uh, who mutilated, if there was a political purpose uh, and not just a, um, a kind of crude um, uh, joking, um, uh, if there was a political purpose, uh, it would have been on the part of people who wanted to prevent the expedition from sailing. That's the last thing that Alcibiades would have wanted to do, is to prevent the expedition from sailing. Um, people who put together the, uh, the, the Eleusinian mockery uh, with the mutilation of the Herms uh, were jumping to an unfounded uh, conclusion that there was a connection. Uh, in fact, how recently the uh, the Eleusinian mockery, mockery occurred uh, is not terribly clear. Uh, it kind of occurred uh, that summer, kind of occurred over the um, uh, the winter. Uh, it could have uh, occurred simultaneously with the actual Eleusinian uh, uh, cult practice, um, which I, I had not come around yet in the uh, the, uh, the uh, Athenian calendar uh, in the uh, the year that we call four fifteen. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, that he was probably guilty uh, of a pretty serious uh, sacrilege that the Athenians would have taken seriously, uh, just as they took atheism seriously. Uh, they would have taken uh, such mockery of the gods 
uh, as maybe even worse than uh, atheism. To mock the gods uh, and the gods' most sacred rituals is probably worse than simply denying the gods. Uh, but I'm not going to try to uh, to balance the, uh, uh, the the level of guilt of impiety uh, and uh, offense to the gods who can take it out on a whole community who don't punish people for those things. Uh, so I think that the the, the mutilation of the herms by any objective uh, speculation is likely to have been uh, done by uh, some of those enemies who accused, uh, who are ready to accuse um, uh, Alcibiades uh, of the uh, the mockery, um, and to put them together and say that these things had to do with a um, uh, an effort to subvert the democracy uh, is a huge leap uh, and an irrational leap. But uh, the Athenian the, the the Athenian people in the uh, the Ecclesia were a very impressionable, uh, were gullible. Uh, and uh, if uh, one person after another uh, stood up uh, and uh, one lied and then the others repeated the lies, um, it was uh, at a meeting of the, um, of the Ecclesia, it could be almost like something going viral now in the, the, uh, the social media. Uh, one person picks it up and then another person might even say, oh, yeah, I, I heard something about that or I heard something like that. Um, and um, uh, so Alcibiades is probably guilty of mockery, or at least very likely guilty of mockery. Not likely by any likelihood um, to or to have been involved in the mutilation of the herds. Uh, but the people who are ready to, uh, to find um, uh, subversion uh, of the democracy uh, wanted to put those two things together because they had uh, Alcibiades uh, in their uh, their sights, in their uh, gun sights, as it were. Um, the uh, and the, the business of other statues mutilated. We don't know uh, a thing about that. It's mentioned, but there's no detail. Statues of whom? Where? There weren't all that many public statues uh, in the uh, the residential parts uh, of Athens, which is where the Herms were. Uh, most of those were uh, were in uh, some of the uh, the uh, temple precincts, especially uh, on the um, the Acropolis uh, or other places. Um, and there weren't all that many public statues, uh, except in connection with the uh, the decoration of of temples on the Acropolis. Um, so, um, I think our, uh, Alcibiades was perfectly capable of uh, that kind of of mockery. Uh, he was known to uh, to behave as a rowdy when drunk. Uh, of course, they didn't have Plato's symposium as uh, as evidence, but uh, his, some of his behavior, and I think Plutarch talks about this elsewhere uh, in uh, in his uh, his life of Alcibiades. Uh, so he was he was certainly a rowdy person, uh, but whether he would do anything like that, um, especially at that point when it would be a bad omen for the expedition that he wanted to lead and uh, and gain maximum glory. That just is uh, is not believable. Thank you, Professor Avramovich. Again, you waved. I know that it is maybe a late, but this is unique opportunity to end some discussion that I started last time with Andras uh, Serafim, our colleague, about the word hybris or hubris. Uh, <laughs> Victor is the best possible judge in those in this issue, as he is both Native American and basically professor of literature, a linguist. So my question for you, Victor, is uh, about the American uh, perception and pronunciation of the word hubris. Uh, for many years, I had opportunity to read in the text hybris in English, translated transliterated with Y, with, with hybris. But mm -hmm. in the last, let's say, 20 years or something, uh, Americans started to write in English hybris or hubris with you. Uh, that goes back more than 20 years. That's that's been that's been going on for uh, for generations now, uh, and uh, the usual pronunciation is hubris. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so it's even, incorrect, and it isn't even, even a good even it is, it, Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Even when it is written with with Y, with with epsilon. Um, the people who well who, who don't know the <laughs> the Greek at all will write it H U and and then pronounce it that way. Um, uh, philologists, uh, Greek scholars, will know how to pronounce it, uh, and uh, will pronounce it hubris. Um, but hubris has uh, has become with uh, with some of the um, uh, the the theorists of of uh, literature um, who um, who sees uh, who sees on hamartia, for example, and then abuse that word. Uh, they also abuse uh, the word uh, hubris, mispronouncing mispronouncing it in the uh, uh, the process. Uh, and uh, and mean uh, something um, much more narrow than the uh, the Greek application of the word. And the Greek application of the word in law, of course, uh, is uh, is not the same as the the application of the word uh, in in Greek tragedy. Uh, notably, in a famous choral ode in uh, Sophocles, uh, Oedipus uh, Tyrannos, uh, Oedipus the king, or Oedipus the uh, the tyrant. Um, and you are hubris. Uh, uh, see, I'm, I'm using the American pronunciation, uh, but this is the way it would be pronounced in an American translation until quite recently. Uh, hubris breeds the tyrant uh, is a, a choral thought uh, in uh, Sophocles' uh, most famous play, uh, and one upon which Aristotle, but other people um, in the Anglophone world have based their theories of, uh, of tragedy. Um, uh, hubris uh, is um, a uh, a conspicuous um, violation of, and now after the of, you can put gods, uh, another person's uh, physical or, um, what's the word I want, R reputational identity. So you can commit uh, hubris, of course. Well, then you don't know about the, the, the criminal application. You can commit uh, hubris against somebody by slapping him in the face. Uh, you can commit hubris against uh, somebody by, uh, by taunting him in public. Uh, you can commit hubris against uh, somebody by, uh, uh, by abusing a slave of his, uh, who is an extension of his, uh, you know, his property, abusing, abusing property. But it's, uh, it's uh, abuse. Um, the the origin of the word is in fact to go beyond. Uh, it could be translated, but it's much too weak a word in English uh, as trespass. So maybe violent trespass will uh, taking two English words will uh, will translate it uh, in most of its applications. Violent trespass. May I? May I? Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would rather love to have a dinner now with you and to discuss uh, in the rest of the time the issue of Ypsilon in American transliteration and then reading of Greek words. And I suppose that you would never read tyrant as tyrant or something. It's never. What is, what is the point that you have just in as far as I know the uh, hubris or hubris is the only word in American transliteration or uh, let's say pronunciation, which is not written as E if it is about Ypsilon. Is that right? So well, you have many, uh, many other examples when you just pronounce Ypsilon with E, isn't that right? When when it occurs as um, the um, uh, the syllabic uh, vowel, yes. But think of it in the diphthongs. Um, uh, al uh, and uh, el uh, and uh, o uh, the uh, the diphthongs. It uh, it has its uh, um, well, especially in the diphthong in the diphthongs. It does have more of its u value. It's el. Epsilon, Upsilon is pronounced L. There we have the uh, the U, U value, the uh, the round um, uh, vowel, um, L. Um, of course, as as Greek develops, that becomes a uh, 
uh, consonant. <laughs> it becomes the uh, the F or the the voiced V sound, uh, but originally it's L. And and you oh the, the we we tend to pronounce the uh, the diphthong uh, omicron uh, omicron upsilon as u, but in uh, in the the high classical period it was it was a diphthong as o, o, o the uh, the two sounds um, distinct and uh, and fused uh, in a diphthong. Um, I'm trying to think of other um, well we have the word hybrid in um, uh, in English. And that, of course, comes from also a, a hubris, uh, but it's a different, it's actually a different origin. Um, and uh, we've got a fair number of words, poly. Um, you know, we don't have polu. Uh, we have uh, have poly and all those uh, those words that have a, a syllabic uh, oxyla, where it's not part of a, of a diphthong. Uh, I can't think of another uh, where, uh, besides this one, uh, where... Uh, a syllabic uh, upsilon uh, becomes a uh, an oo sound. You know, think of all the hydro from uh, Hudor. Uh, that's you know, and hyper, hyper, and hypo. Uh, all of those. Um, so you're right. This is this is an exception. This is is an outlier. And I can't think of another one. If I uh, if if one of them occurs to me, you'll be first to know. Um, and th th which which indicate uh, I want to point out that if anybody has a question about any of this or an objection to any of this uh, in retrospect, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Uh, I will put on the um, on the file of the thing after I clean up a few of the little mistakes that I noticed as I was reading it. Uh, I'll put my e address, and anybody is welcome to uh, to get in touch with me with uh, with a question, objection, uh, or you know anything that might be related to this. Or anything that I might know, I've got an answer to almost every possible question. Thank you very much, Professor Castellani. As I think there are no more questions, uh, we can conclude the lecture. It was very interesting. I think the discussion was interesting too. And as soon as you forward the text, I am going to make it available to all interested members of the forum. So. Thank you very much for this visit online as it may be. And we hope that next time we're going to have you in Belgrade again, and hopefully that you won't need a mask. Okay. Um, I have the, uh, the uh, Oxford English Dictionary here, and I've got the page open to impeach. Um, I have the fine print edition, so holding this up is going to do nothing for you. Um, it's interesting to see uh, how it uh, had a wider spread application uh, in its uh, its earliest uh, uh, its earliest occurrences, and its earliest occurrences go go back pretty uh, pretty far. Apparently, uh, it existed. Comes from Old French, and earliest instances are from the uh, the fifteenth century. Um, when the lawyers took it over, um, it acquired some special applications. Uh, and uh, yeah, what impeach was in uh, in British law, um, I don't know. Uh, I know how it's used in uh, in American political discussion. And uh, just to repeat what I said before, uh, although for Thomas Jefferson and uh, John Adams and all those guys. Uh, impeach had uh, a uh, a particular uh, narrow application that is written into the Constitution. Um, for an American now, uh, impeach used otherwise uh, than for actually for a president, not for a judge, not for vice president, but for anyone but a, a, a president uh, is probably going to be understood as uh, as metaphorical. Whereas it's it's or, or any other use is, is simply another species of the original application of the word, uh, and uh, impeach and all you know the text that I've been using the text all our legal context or public law context, uh, whether uh, it would be used 
uh, whether ace angalia and see that's the one that i haven't haven't researched as, as thoroughly as i might um uh, whether that would be used in uh, in purely uh, private law i have my doubts but i i, I can't uh, i can't state it for certain uh because i haven't looked into uh, to fourth century uh, application of it uh, I I don't believe it occurs in tragedy. I'd be wrong on that, but the thesaurus linguae Greci will will set me straight when I find some time to uh, to track um, angelia um, with a preposition ace or s, either of the spellings in Attic, um, or ace angelo um, in all of the inflected forms. Well, I. Don't think I have the time to do that right now. But I do hope to see you uh, about the same time next year when I hope uh, the uh, the great plague has uh, has wound down. And if there still is a residual mask requirement, I will come uh, armed. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I enjoy this stuff. We we'll enjoy it too. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Yeah, Next Merry time, Christmas. We... Merry Dude. Christmas. You get, you get two Christmases. So have two uh, Christmases to Merry Christmases to uh, to uh, Happy uh, New Year's. Uh, whether they begin the same as uh, as us uh, on the. Um, yeah, the Gregorian calendar or on the uh, the Julian one, but uh, best best to all of you, best of health to all of you, and uh, I hope same time next year uh, to be there, uh, not just as a face on a screen. Thank you very much. This the best to you as well, and for the rest. Of wish you. you all the best, and hoping that next December you will be in Belgrade again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah.